So this syllabus objective is focusing on comparing ecosystems and it looks at comparing ecosystems in a number of different ways. It says that we need to be able to use species diversity indices, species interactions, in other words, biotic factors, but also abiotic factors to compare ecosystems across spatial and temporal scale. So space, you know, different distances, so maybe different ecosystems, or how the ecosystem varies with increased distance, but also temporal scales. So in other words, comparing the same ecosystems at different times. So it's about using abiotic factors to compare ecosystems. So what are abiotic factors? They're the non-living physical factors in an ecosystem that influence what organisms are able to live uh, in that ecosystem. So the distribution and abundance of species is influenced by the abiotic factors. So we can compare ecosystems by comparing the abiotic factors. Specifically, the syllabus asks us to consider it in terms of climate, substrate, and also size and depth. So let's have a look at a few examples here. Here's a, an ecosystem that looks like it's pretty cold and uh, like looks like there's there's snow on the ground. And also there's some difference between, um, this is a, quite a flat area here in the middle, and then it sort of goes up the hills here. Uh, so like almost like a valley or probably a riverbed or something. Different abiotic factors, and we can see that there's differences in the types of organisms that grow there. Comparing it to this ecosystem, uh, the abiotic factors are really quite different. This has uh, probably got high uh, humidity in the air, lots of water, water is very much abundant. There's a lot of organic matter, we could expect there's large amounts of nutrients in the soil. Um, down here, uh, in the floor of the ecosystem, it's, it's quite, the, the low, uh, light levels are quite low. So uh, we contrast it to this Australian bush. Uh, you can see, look at the color of the soil there, the substrate, uh, lots of light. Um, the fact that the plants are, are really very quite stunted in their growth kind of suggests to us that there's either or both low nutrients in the soil and or uh, low amounts of, of water. You can see it's quite a sandy type soil there as well. So the abiotic factors influence what grows in this ecosystem, what the distribution and abundance of the species in this ecosystem. And here we actually have a marine ecosystem. Uh, and so this is, there's, there's both producers and consumers in this and the distribution and abundance is limited by, or largely it's influenced by where the water is. So, uh, a marine ecosystem, uh, different abiotic factors, and that influences the composition of the community and the distribution and abundance of those species as well. So the syllabus objective asks us to consider abiotic factors in terms of climate, substrate, and size slash depth. So low temperature, of course, is associated with a, a decrease in the rate of chemical reactions and metabolism. Uh, but also extremely high temperatures can be associated with denaturation of proteins, etc. as well. Precipitation or availability of water. Uh, look, all uh, water obviously is the universal solvent, super important for chemical reactions within all organisms and the health of organisms. Ecosystems with um, a low amount of water really struggle to have large amounts of biomass. Wind not only can be a challenge for species to uh, withstand large amounts of wind. Uh, species can also exploit wind for distribution of, spe of seeds, distribution of pollen, etc. Availability of light obviously is essential for photosynthesis and then f therefore uh, the production of biomass and then supporting a, uh, a food chain. So the second one about substrate. What's substrate? Substrate is basically the physical structure on which the organisms live and grow. So normally in um, a terrestrial ecosystems, we're thinking about soil, dirt and soil. Uh, but, and, and so, but, but of course also could be a rocky substrate. Um, and so what could vary here is the, the pH of the soil, whether it's acidic or basic. Different organisms tolerate 
different levels of, of, um, of pH, and that can influence how well they can uptake their nutrients and use nutrients and things as well. So the nutrients, we're thinking about the, um, the inorganic nutrients in the soil, so the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium. Salinity, how salty the, the soil is and how salty the water is. Uh, and the ability of the soil to be able to retain water. So sand, for example, doesn't isn't able to retain water and it just runs straight through whereas clay is able to retain water so the ability of soil to be able to retain water also influences what can grow there now in terms of size and depth this is probably a little bit vague but I, I'm, I'm thinking about depth here in terms of say depth of a um, an aquatic ecosystem and as you go further down into the aquatic ecosystem there's uh, decreased temperature there's decreased light there may be variation in water currents and things as well. So size, I'm thinking about the size of an aquatic uh, ecosystem. For example, if it's just like a, um, uh, a rock pool, well, um, it, because there's not a whole lot of water in it, it's in, it the, the temperature can change quite quickly as the water evaporates, it changes the salinity. Temperature also affects the oxygen saturation, etc. There's another important point I want to make here in terms of abiotic factors, in terms of how they influence the distribution and abundance of uh, the organisms in a community. And this is a concept we call zonation. Basically what we see with zonation is we see a change in the pattern of the distribution and abundance of a community with distance. And it corresponds with a change in abiotic factors. So a way to think about this would be vertical or altitudinal zonation as we go up a mountain. So what changes as we go up the mountain? We have, uh, it, it's much cooler, there's less water that's windier, there's less nutrients, there's uh, less soil as we go further up into the mountains. And that's, uh, we see a decrease in the biodiversity, we see a decrease in the size of the, uh, the, the plants, and the biomass in the ecosystem as we go up further up into the mountains up to the point where we we no longer um so we have trees down below and then then it gets smaller into bushes and then into grasses uh and then to the mosses and lichens and then up here we've got uh barren rock where we've got no uh no plant life at all so a change in abiotic factors we see a change in the biotic or the change in the community, the abundance and distribution uh, of the community. Another way we might be able to see that is in vertical zonation that we could see uh, with a cliff wall. What changes here, so this is, this is uh, uh, right next to the ocean, and what would change through here is the tide. So at the moment it's low tide, but at high tide we can see it would probably go up around about here. And you can see bands where we have differences in species uh, distribution and abundance in these different bands. So essentially, the ones down the bottom are, are only out of the water for a very short period of time each day. Uh, whereas all the way up here, these species are out of the water for a large part of the day. So there's a difference in the abiotic factors in terms of um, you know, the, the amount of water, the amount of uh, sea spray, the amount of uh, wave action, etc. So the species tend to organise themselves based on the, um, the change in those abiotic factors in terms of what they can tolerate. 